Hi everyone, welcome to our team call today. We are so excited to have you here, whether you're watching live or watching the recording. You know we have a lot going on this month, so a lot of people are catching the recording, but we're excited to have you guys here. Thanks for taking time to listen in and be a part of this. So I am so excited to introduce our special guest speaker today. We have Kevin Jensen, who is going to share um, his story and some tips um, that he has for our team. He is amazing. He's been like my dad in Beachbody, my mentor, um, just someone that I've been able to count on and lean on um, throughout the years and just learning what to do as a coach. Um, so if you guys saw a little bit of what I posted, he helped Carl Dykler launch the network, launch the coaching side of it, and then they made his wife the very first coach of Beachbody. So he's seen it from the beginning. He's watched um, Beachbody grow and expand, and um, it's a pretty amazing guy. So thanks for coming on the call, Kevin. Very, very happy to be here. Thank you. Sure. We're excited to hear from you. So go ahead and take it away. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to rearrange just a little bit. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm excited. Anytime my Facebook message lights up and I see Shannon's name highlighted, I'm looking forward to that conversation because from the first day I met this young lady, I knew that she was in the right place at the right time. She and I were having a conversation and it was early in her career. And I said, it's great to be able to wake up to something you enjoy doing every day. Uh, that's what they define as passion. And, and if we've got that in our life, then uh, that's a good thing. And if we don't have it, we need to look on, work on finding it. Because um, if you have something that you wake up to every day that you're passionate about, it will add years to your life in more ways than one. So I'm excited to be here. As Shannon said, I've been around network marketing for a very long time. I was uh, 21 years old, invited by the girl I was dating at the time. I was attending a small school. Some of you who are in Utah or live in Utah know I'm talking about. To, there's a little school down in St. George called Dixie College. I was, I was attending Dixie and met a young lady who one weekend invited me to go home to meet her parents. And I thought, hey, that's a good step in the right direction. So we, uh, we traveled home. She was from Pleasant Grove. And uh, as soon as I walked in the door and met her mom, the next thing her mom said was, what are you doing on the weekend? What are you doing tomorrow? Because this is a Friday afternoon. I said, well, I'm a guest in your home. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. She says, we're going to a meeting. And... Uh, so I went to a meeting, 3,000 plus people at, uh, those of you who are familiar with the Wasatch Front, Timp View High School. I went to a meeting there. The auditorium was packed full of crazy adults who were making all kinds of noise, jumping up and down on their chairs, just doing all kinds of weird stuff that I thought at the time was a very immature. Understand that I was uh, raised by parents who my father spent seven years in the Navy and he and my mom, are, are, before they got to the age they are now, were amateur rodeo cowboys. And so I was raised in an environment where I was taught to speak only when spoken to and to never show my emotion. Cowboy up was a phrase in my house long before it became a bumper sticker. And, uh, but anyway, I went to this event, and here are all these adults just going crazy and yelling at the top of their voice and having all kinds of fun and, and, uh, and acting like they were at a football game somewhere. And I was a little bit embarrassed by it all. And uh, the person who is not my mother-in-law, <laughs> but the lady who invited me to this event, uh, she's, at the break, she said, you look like you're a little taken back by all this. And I said, no, I'm embarrassed for, for these people. Since when do adults have to act like teenagers? And um, anyway, she said, well, if you're not comfortable, you know, just do me a favor, wander around, listen to the conversations happening during the break. And if after the break you want to go home, here's the keys to the car. We're not, we, we'll catch a ride with somebody else. And um, so I honored her. I wandered around and found the biggest group I could find where I could be the mo little fly on the wall. And I listened to a husband and wife tell their story. And their story changed me. It changed me because here they were, 
a, a young, at one point in time in their life, a young family. She had supported him as he went to school. Um, he came out of school, not able to get a job in his area of expertise. She kept her job. He found a job. She moved to part time. And in a matter of a, a few months, they both lost their jobs. And they're on the verge, verge of losing their house when there's a knock on the door. It was one of their next door neighbors who said, we know that you're facing tough times financially. We have this little business that we run out of our home that makes our mortgage payment every month. Would you be interested in hearing more about it? No pressure, no expectation, just it works for us. Well, do you want to take a look? And they're like, sure. So I thought, hmm. And the, this husband and wife who are in the middle of this group said, we're going to tell the rest of the story this afternoon when it's our turn on stage. So I thought, I'm going to stick around just to hear the story. And um, basically, the story went. They started a little business that they ran out of their home. It became a really big business that they ran out of their home, big enough that they saved their home, big enough that they paid uh, for the education of their four boys to any school that they chose. Interesting enough, the boys all got degrees and then decided to join their mom and dad in their home-based business. That's where I fell in love with this concept that we call network marketing. Absolutely swallowed it all the way down to my belly button. And um, <clears throat> as divine intervention would have it, a few weeks later when the school year ended, I, uh, I got a job with a company that marketed their products and and. and and just dis dis distributed their products through network marketing. So I, I've been involved in this profession that I absolutely love since I was 21 years old. A young man recently returned from a mission whose bishop was the legal counsel for a company there in Utah Valley. And um, he... <clears throat> he got me a job at this company that... Uh, when I started, there were 80 employees. When I left, there were over 300. When I started, they were doing 36 million a year. When I left, they were doing 300 million. It was a great place to learn how this profession works. And uh, I then went, <clears throat> didn't know I had skills and abilities people were willing to pay me for until I got a phone call from a professional recruiter who said, hey, how would you like to work for another company? I'm like, well, didn't think I had it, no idea. Met with that company, they offered me a job, and for the next 10 years, I traveled all over the, all over the globe. This company is a company that does business in 52 countries. I had an opportunity over the course of 10 years to teach, train, and motivate in 28 of those 52, and I just got tired of traveling. And so uh, I, I resigned my position, and within weeks, less than a month, my phone rang, on the other end of the line was a gentleman that I worked with at that company who had left the company, had been hired by Carl to help start the network. And he said to me, hey, we, we got something really cool going on here. Love to come and have you help us out. And I said, tell me more about it. And he said, well, first of all, the name is Million Dollar Body because that's what the network was called originally was the Million Dollar Body. And I'm like, no, thank you, and hung up the phone without any more explanation because I absolutely conjured up in my mind a belief system that why would I want to be a part of a company called Million Dollar Body? And uh, shortly after we started it, we actually changed it back to Team Beach, the coach network. And um, But he called me in January, called me in March, he called me in May, he called me in July, he called me in September, and every time I was like, look, I have no interest in, in working for a company called Beachbody, million dollar body, whatever you want to call it. I have no idea, in no, no desire to be a Chippendales dancer, right? So I absolutely had nothing, zero interest. But in September of 06, I got a call and they said, look, we're, we're behind the eight ball. You and Milan have talents and abilities that would help us. Why don't you come to LA? Let's talk about what we want to do. Let's talk about a, con a uh, consulting contract where you can help us get this program started. We're like, hey, a free trip to LA. We have a daughter down there. Let's go check it out. So we agreed. We walked into uh, back then 8383 Wilshire Boulevard in West Hollywood. 
sat down in a little room about 10 by 10. Three of the walls were glass. Only one of them was a, a structure that held all the glass up. And in walks this guy, all five foot seven of him, <laughs> named Carl Deichler. 15 minutes later, the fact that the company was called Beachbody had zero relevant, zero impact on us at all, relevance at all. None. Why? Because we understood what Carl's vision and his passion was. And that was to help people achieve their goals when it comes to fitness and live a healthy, more fulfilling life. Once we understood that Beachbody was a marketing strategy, because people, there's a vanity side to all of us. <laughs> Once we understood all of that, then all of a sudden we had a completely different vision for what Beachbody was and what Beachbody meant and what, Be what Beachbody had to offer. And we went from, hey, let's figure out a nice 90-day contractual agreement to, hey, how can we be a part of this thing long term? As Shannon said, I joined the corporate team. I uh, worked on the corporate side of this business for two years. My sweet wife, Milan, was the first coach in the network. She, uh, uh, because she had some network marketing experience, she was the mentor to the founders group, Tracy Morrow and Pete Peña and Doug Fitzgerald and all those guys that are now, if you look in the Millionaire Club, a lot of, them's, a lot of their names are there. So we, we've been in, in this thing since the very beginning, and I will tell you, two years into the program, I had the chance to see one of my wife's checks. Her check for a week was what mine was for a month. And I thought to myself, why in the world, as much as I enjoy working at Beachbody Corporate, very creative, very fun place to work, why would I work for Carl when I could work for my wife? We had rented our home here in the wine country and moved to L.A. to be closer to the office so that I didn't have to commute all the time. And um, so I walked into Carl's office and said, hey, dude, we got to talk. And he kind of slapped his hand on the desk and said, took you a lot longer than I thought it would. <laughs> so we came up with an exit plan. And in September of 08, um, I saw the lights of Los Angeles in my rearview mirror. We came back here to the wine country. And I've been working with Milan in this business ever since. And guys, I got to tell you, the more I spend in this space that we call beach body in this profession that we call network marketing, the more I understand what a unique opportunity we have as a company. We're not a typical traditional network marketing company, although we have to be proud of the fact that we are in that, we are in that profession. We build, we market our products to our network of friends. We expand our network of friends through social media networking, and we offer products and services to them. We get paid on building a network of like-minded people doing what we do. It's an awesome opportunity. I just sent to Shannon, prior to jumping on this uh, call, a, a recording that she'll share with you on probably on your team page that, that talks about um, – the possibilities that, that many of us, all of us have in our life. But it just, it blows my mind what's possible in this beach body space. And here's what I want to spend in the next 10 or 10 or 15 minutes. I could talk all day and I won't, but I could because I love what we do in a big way. But here's, here's a few statements I'm going to make. You are exactly where you deserve to be in your beach body business. Now, if you're just getting started, then you've got the whole program in front of you. If you've been a part of Beachbody for a while, you are where you deserve to be in your Beachbody business. Now, I hope you don't take that in an offensive kind of way, but here, here's what I've learned. Uh, as recently as, as October, when Milan and I and 100 plus Beachbody coaches attended an event in Las Vegas called the GoPro Recruiting Mastery event that Eric Worre hosts every year. He had speakers, uh, Bob Proctor, he had uh, Tony Robbins, he had Robert Kiyosaki. And the one thing that, that I learned coming out of this is we all are in our life exactly where we deserve to be. Now, we're there for one of two reasons. We're not doing something we should do, 
is the, or we're doing something that we shouldn't. <laughs> okay? Now, not doing what we should do. That's where most of us fall into place. And why do we not do what we should do? It's because we believe junk that we don't need to believe. So here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to rephrase my statement. You're exactly where you should be in your beach or deserve to be in your beach body business. You are exactly where you believe you should be in your beach body business. So one of the things I'm going to encourage you all to do today moving forward is set an intention that you are going to change your belief. And the best way to change your belief is to engage in personal development. Now, yes, it's one of the three vital behaviors. Yes, you hear it all the time. Yes, if you listen to a Monday morning wake-up call, almost every coach talks about it. But do you hear what they are saying? That's the question. Do you hear what they're saying? Now, I've heard it for years, years and years and years and years and years. I've heard it. I heard it from my mentor who said there were days when he just didn't feel like talking to people, so he'd lock himself in the bathroom, sit in the bathtub, and read his motivational book. And in his case, the Bible was his favorite motivational book. I heard it probably 30 times as I traveled with him around the world to conventions uh, for this company that I worked for but I didn't hear it, okay? And there's a difference. I heard it more clearly than ever before when Bob Proctor, 84-year-old man, walks out on stage and he talks about his life. He talks about the day he heard of a guy named Earl Nightingale. And he talks about when he met the author of Think and Grow Rich. The name slipped my mind for a moment. If you remember it, speak up. <laughs> Carnegie. Um, anyway, he was introduced to that book, Think and Grow Rich. And here he is now, 84 years old. He was standing up on stage in front of 8,000 Napoleon Hill. Thank you, Susan. Um, for telling me the name of the author. <laughs> Just slipped my mind. But um, this guy at 84 years old was reading from a hardbound copy of Think and Grow Rich. He reads from it every day at 84 years old. He was quoting from this book at 84 years old. There's not a day in his life that goes by that he doesn't spend time in that book. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us have a tendency, it's in our DNA, it's in our belief system, it's, it's, it's in what's been ingrained in our brain, that we turn off any time we hear anything related to money, getting rich, prosperity, all this kind of stuff. I find that to be the case even more so if we have some kind of groundedness to Christianity. Now, I'm not saying that in a negative way, but I'm saying for some reason we get stuck in our brain that there's, there's, there's a problem if we're pursuing prosperity. Well, the... the uh, the recording that I, gave, that I sent to Shannon is a recording by Earl Nightingale. It's called The Strangest Secret. And he starts quoting from Scripture how we should be pursuing being our best, how we should be pursuing being prosperous, how we should be pursuing excellence in every aspect of our life. And I'm here to invite you guys today to ask yourself, am I happy with where I am in my beach body business? Am I happy where I am in my life, in my journey through life? Am I happy where I am in my relationships? Am I happy where I am in my community? Am I happy where I am in my church? Am I happy where I am in my fitness? 
And if you're not happy in any one of those areas, all you got to do is change your thinking. All you got to do is identify what the limiting belief might be and then create a course of action to change that limiting belief. And I have personally found that the most important thing you can do is if you have a limiting belief that's getting in the way of your weight loss journey or if you have a limiting belief getting in the way of your financial success with your Beachbody business or any other business that you might be engaged in, if you have a limiting belief about how crappy your job is that you work for somebody else and you hate it, then change the limiting belief. And most of the time that change comes with finding a book or a recording or a video that causes you to think differently than you're thinking right now. So when, when, Shannon, when I asked Shannon what she wanted me to talk about, she said she wants me, wanted me to talk about the future, the possibilities, and, and the potentials that exist in Beachbody. But here's what I'm going to tell you. The possibilities and potentials that exist in Beachbody are what is in your brain. It's what you believe is possible. But here's what I know, and I just checked this before I got on this call. If you go to your online office and you click on the recognition tab, and you click, and then you, then you select the link to the Millionaire Club, you're going to count 71 names, 71 people who have earned at least a million dollars in their Beachbody business. Now I'm here to tell you that probably half of that group have earned over three million dollars and probably half of the half have earned over $5 million. In eight years that the Coach Network has been in existence. Now, dollars are strictly a, a way of measuring the impact we're having in, in other people's lives. But I would like to ask each one of you to, ask, to, to think, have you ever asked yourself, what if I won the lottery, what would I do? What if I won, what if the lottery was a hundred million dollars? What would I do with that money? If you haven't, it's probably because you live in a state where you don't have a lottery, <laughs> right? <laughs> but if you have, that means that you can drive north of where you live or west of where you live or east of where you live or south of where you live and drive across the state boundary and be able to participate in a lottery. I'm not in, I'm not advocating that I'm just saying have you ever imagined have you ever asked yourself what would I do if and all the things that you think about you would do the only reason that that is not happening for you in your life and in your business is because you have something getting in the way you're either not doing something you should do or you're doing something you shouldn't now what's the biggest thing that you shouldn't do you should not dwell on negativity and we do it all the time. We do it with the, the shows we choose to watch on TV. We do it with the music we choose to listen to uh, on, on our mobile devices. We do it in our language that we choose to allow to come out of our mouth. And I'm not talking about necessarily profanity. I'm talking about negativity. We can change all of that, guys. And here's the other thing I'm here to tell you today is that which you change and replace the negativity with positivity, your business is going to move forward. There's no doubt in my mind that your business will move forward, especially if you make it a daily practice. You hear about Bob Proctor talked about reading and think and grow rich every day of his life ever since the day he was introduced to the book. So I'm, I'm going to invite you to set an intention in 2016 that you are going to read something positive and growth-oriented every single day. And yes, for those of you who have a spiritual inclination in your life, reading scripture is a critical part of that process but I'm going to invite you to think beyond that. I'm going to invite you to think about some of the great authors that are out there today, today that, are, that, are, that have, I believe, divinely inspired writing. Um, John Maxwell, 
Failing Forward, 21 Laws. Uh, all John Maxwell books are, are, are awesome books. I believe the man was inspired to write every word that comes out of every one of the books that he has written. There are some really good books out there. There's a book that I would strongly encourage you all to get called The One Thing by Mark Keller, the gentleman who started Keller Williams Real Estate. The One Thing, one of the greatest books I've ever read. I just finished reading it. And there's a book I'm going to encourage you all to read, and I'm going to ask you to please don't judge the book by its title. Okay? The title of the book is called Attract Money Now. Attract Money Now. Now, the cool thing about that book is you can actually get a free PDF version or a free e-version of that book by going to attractmoneynow.com. And you will provide your name, your email address, and they will send it to you in a PDF form. Great book. I, I recently, um, after hearing most of the seven-figure income earners at the GoPro event all have personal development coaches, I decided to invest in a personal development coach. My personal development coach introduced me to that book the very first day. Now, I will tell you, I vetted out my personal development coach, even though it's a part of the Eric Worre program, and he is of the same faith and same belief system that I am, and the first book he introduced me to was Attract Money Now. Sometimes the titles are what they are, just like Beachbody is called Beachbody. It's a marketing tactic but the content goes way beyond attracting money. And I'm going to ask each of you to just, if you have a limiting belief around reading books and listening to tapes that have anything to do with financial gain, chase that belief system out of your brain. Because guys and gals, you are limiting your capability and possibility relative to being successful in life, in any area of your life, if that is a limiting belief. It used to be one of mine. It did. It used to be one of mine. It isn't anymore because I believe that that is an, that's one of those, one of those hurdles that the adversary sticks in our way to, to keep us down in a negative place, in a place where we're going to settle for status quo, or a place where we're going to not try to better ourselves, in a place where we're not going to try to grow in every aspect of our life. So when, when we start talking about the possibilities, the possibilities are whatever you want them to be. You want to see your name on the Millionaire Club? Put it there. If you want to see... Uh, if, if you want to build an education fund for your children or your grandchildren, build it. If you want to go build a new house, go build it. If you want to buy a new car, go buy it. I'm not saying doing it by going in debt. I'm saying start to see it every day. Start to read about it every day. Start to change your belief system every day and watch it become reality sooner than you think it will. But I, if, if you read 10 pages a day every day for a year, that's 3,600 and something pages. That's 15 really good books a year on average. Where would you be if you spend that much time? And if you're a Beachbody coach and you're on this call, so you must be. And if you're not, you should be. There's a success tab in your online office that gives you a drink, direct link to the archives of Success Magazine. If you don't know what to read, just go snooping around in there and read and listen and watch all the stuff that's there because there's so much stuff there. It's unbelievable what's possible to us. So here's, uh, and I'll, I'll end now even though there's so much more that I, I, I could get to. A couple, of other, a couple other websites you might want to check out when it comes to building your belief, okay? Um, one is called networkmarketingpro.com. I'm a big Eric Worre fan. Networkmarketingpro.com. Eric Worre does a daily blog, video blog. Um, 
with it, the sole purpose of elevating the profession of network marketing. And we're all in that profession. We do it a little bit different than most companies do it at Beachbody. And that's what makes us unique. And that's why people are starting to copy us. Shoot, the company I used to work for, I've got some friends who are still distributors there. And they're like, hey, KJ, everybody calls me KJ. Hey, KJ, uh, guess what we're doing now? They've got weight loss challenges going on. It's like, hmm, I wonder where they got the idea from, right? They just came up with their own version of a three-day cleanse. It's a joke, but they came up with their own version of a three-day cleanse, much like our three-day refresh. So, guys, as we approach this new year, I'm going to ask you to clearly identify where you want to be a year from now. Clearly identify and be specific when it comes to your beach body business. Now specific in my mind is a dollar amount because a dollar amount is a reflection of the success in your business. And the truth is as you're successful in your business, the dollars show up. It's kind of a either side of the coin kind of a deal. But decide where you want to be. And then every day, imagine your life at that place. If, you're, if you want to be a stay-at-home mom and you can't do that right now, then what does that take financially for that to become reality? If you are a stay-at-home mom but you want to make a, 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 a financial contribution to the family budget, what does that number look like? If you want to, if, if you want to change your address, what does that what does that financial dollar look like to be able to change your address? The only thing getting in your way is your belief system. And the biggest thing you can do to build your belief is to flood your subconscious with positive stuff. Now, I will tell you, there are days when I think, dang, why did it take me till I was 54 years old to really figure it out? And then Earl Nightingale says, what are you worrying about it being 54? What are you going to do with the next 54? Right? So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the journey you've traveled. All that matters is the one that got, you've got in front of you. And if you like the, the course it's headed on, stay on the course. If you don't like the course that it's headed on, change it. And it's all in your power and your capability and your control and you know if, if if setting a dollar amount is offensive to you then just ask yourself how many people are you going to help how many people are you going to help change their situation and if it, you know statistically if a family could make 500 to a thousand dollars a month it would change their life for the rest of their life So how many families are you going to help make $500 to $1,000 a month? How many families are you going to help make $2,000 a month? Shoot, if you've been watching Carl's latest passion, if you buy hammer and chisel, if you're one of 1,000 people that buy hammer and chisel, you get to be, you get to say, I helped put a family back in, I helped put a homeless family back in the house and paid their rent for a year. And if you've got a circle of 100 friends, you should reach out to them and say, hey, you want to help put a homeless family back? Buy hammer and chisel. Why? Because for every 1,000 units we sell, Beachbody is going to put a homeless family back in a house and cover their expenses for a year. I don't know how. That's crazy, right? That's the kind of company you're a part of. Shoot, we donated to Wounded Warrior Project. We've got the whole rain catcher program. Now Carl is donating money to the to take homeless families and put them in a warm a warm house with a roof over their head and and not have to worry about their their rent or mortgage for a year. Not every company does that. You guys are a part of a very progressive organization who have their main objective to help people live their best life. And as a Beachbody coach, how do you live your best life? Very simple. Invite, invite, invite. Be proof the product works. And work on yourself personally every day. And 
if I had my way, I'd actually flip number three to number one. Because here's what I know. If you are truly working on yourself and you're reading books that inspire you to be the best you can be, then it's going to drive you to take action. And if you're going to take action, you'll be inviting. If you're going to take action, you're going to be pushing play every day. You all might be a part of Carl's 50,000 21-day fix group. I don't know what you're doing right now. But you just got to love where we're at as a company and where we're going as a company. Holy smokes, a billion-dollar company, and we only do business in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah, Beachbody sells a few products in other countries through their online marketing program. But that's craziness. Where, where's this thing going to be when we go global? In July, they're going to announce our first international expansion country. And once the international expansion starts, imagine where this thing's going to be two years from now, five years from now. So set your course, set your goals, don't limit yourself. One of the exercises I'll invite you to participate in, and then I'll be quiet, I promise, Shannon, is this. Before this week ends, I would love you to sit down, each one of you, I'd love you to sit down and describe in as much detail as possible your perfect day. From the time your eyes open in the morning until the time your head hits the pillow at the end of the day, if you could design your perfect day, what would it look like? What would you do? Where would you go? Who would you interact with? What significance would you, would you be in the world? What impact would you have in the world? Des describe your perfect day. And then compare it to what days are typical for you now and say, oh, the biggest obstacle getting in my way for me being able to do this versus do this, it probably has a dollar sign attached to it. Unfortunately, the currency, and you think about current, right? Current like electricity. You flip the switch, you expect your light, to, your house to light up. Well, guess what? You flip the switch in life, currency, money, injects energy into the whole process of life. So I'm going to be quiet now because I talk way too much. But I have to tell you, if you want your life to change in the next 12 months, you can change it. And you're going to have some crappy days. You're going to have days where you go, Ugh. but you know what? doesn't matter. At the 365 days from now, if you had more positive days and you had less than positive days, then you're going to be further along than you are right now. That much I promise. But win them every day at a time. Win today. You can't win next Monday. Today, you have to win today, today, and win tomorrow, and then win the next day and get to next Monday before you can win next Monday. So just win today. And winning today means winning the decision you make in the next minute, in the next hour, in the next 12 hours. Win those decisions. And if you win more decisions than you lose, you're going to be on the positive end of the day. So just win the next decision. And ponder that for a while and let it become whatever it is it needs to become for each one of you. That might be your fitness. That might be your finances. That might be your mindset that might be your relationship that might be your spirituality just win the next decision so know that you are a part of a progressive company know that you're a part of a company that believes that they can impact the world guys i spent two years with carl deichler he does not blow smoke he does not speak a single word out of his mouth unless he believes that that what he just said can become reality and if you haven't learned that yet you will and until you do, trust me, I spent two years with a guy. I argued with him at the top of my voice at times. We shook hands agreeing to disagree at times. We gave hugs when we were victorious together at times. I have more respect for that man as a CEO than any other person I know leading any other company of any size that I can think of because the guy is visionary. He's magical. He knows what he wants, and he's going to go get it. And if you look at it, it's all about helping people live their best life. That's who we are. That's what we're about. That's what we can be. And living their best life starts with us helping other people live theirs. Shannon, I promise I'm done now. <laughs> You're awesome, Kevin. Oh, my gosh. The, the comments that are coming in are great. Everyone 
just loved your comments and your insights. And I mean, this is what it's all about, coaches. Um, this is what it's all about. Everything that Kevin said. And, you know, when I sat down with Kevin the first time I met him and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And he said, you know, what are you passionate about? What drives you to wake up every single day? And I'm so glad that I chose to do this and to jump in with full passion because it's changed my life and so many people and our team is doing amazing. Um, so I'm so glad. So thank you so much, Kevin. Um, we are almost out of time here, but I want to take a picture. This is something we've been doing on our calls. Are you up for a picture, Kevin? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm showing everyone. If you don't have your screen showing, make sure to undo your screen so you can be in our... Danielle's got to get the hat on. There you go. Okay. All is good. Yeah, she has she a tree growing out of her head. <laughs> yeah. I love the tree, Danielle. It looks awesome. All right. We need everyone's pictures. Wow. We have a lot of people. This is probably one of our biggest calls. So awesome. Okay. Let me um, get a screenshot here. Okay. So on the count of three, everyone smile. One, two, three. Okay. Let me do one more just to make sure we got it. Okay. On the count of three, one, two, three. Awesome. Wow. Well, that was amazing. Thanks again, Kevin. You're awesome. We really appreciate your time for taking time to talk to our team. It was amazing. So thanks so much. My pleasure. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Sure. Well, have a good day, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.